This episode is brought to you by Cisco Educational Premium. Did you know that Navier-Stokes equations are partial differential equations? In physics, the Navier-Stokes equations are partial differential equations which describe the motion of viscous fluid substances named after the French engineer and physicist Claude Louis Navier and Anglo-Irish physicist and mathematician George Gabriel Stokes. They were developed over several decades of progressively building the theories from 1822 Navier to 1842 to 1850 the Stokes. The Navier-Stokes equations mathematically express conservation of momentum and conservation of mass from Newtonian fluids. They are sometimes accompanied by an equation of state relating pressure, temperature, and density. They arise from applying Isaac Newton's second law to fluid motion, together with the assumption that the stress in the fluid is the sum of a diffusing viscous term proportional to the gradient, proportional to the gradient of velocity and pressure term, and describing viscous flow. The difference between them and a closely related Euler equations is the Navier-Stokes equations take viscosity into account while Euler equations model only in viscid flow. As a result, the Navier-Stokes are a parabolic equation and therefore have better analytic properties at the expense of having less mathematical structure. For instance, they, they are never completely integrable. The Navier-Stokes equations are useful because they describe the physics of many phenomena of scientific and engineering interest. They may be used to model the weather, ocean currents, water flow in a pipe, and air flow around a wing. The Navier-Stokes equation in their full and simplified form help with the design of aircraft and cars, the study of blood flow, the design of power stations the analysis of pollution, and many other things. Coupled with Maxwell's equation, they can be used to model and study magnetohydrodynamics. The Navier-Stokes equations are also of great interest in a purely mathematical sense. Despite their wide range of practical uses, it has not, yet, it has not yet been proven whether smooth solutions always exist, exist in three dimensions. That is whether they are infinitely differentiable or even just bounded at all points in the domain. It is called the Navier-Stokes existence and smoothness problem. The solution of the equations is a flow velocity. It is a factor field to every point in a fluid at any moment in a time interval. It gives a factor whose direction and magnitude are those of the velocity of the fluid at that point in space and at that moment in time. It is usually studied in three spatial dimensions and one time dimension, although two spatial dimensional and steady state cases are often used as models. And higher dimensional analogs are studied in both pure and applied mathematics. Once the velocity field is calculated, other quantities of interest such as pressure or temperature may be found using dynamical equations and relations. This is different from what one normally sees in classical mechanics where solutions are typical trajectories of position of a particle or deflection of a continuum. Studying velocity instead of position makes more sense for a fluid, although for visualization purposes, one can compute various trajectories. In particular, the streamlines of a vector field interpreted as flow velocity are paths along which a massless fluid particle travel. These paths are the integral curves whose derivative at each point is called the vector field, and they can represent visually the behavior of the vector wheel at, in, at a point in time. The Navier-Stokes momentum equation can be derived as a particular form of the Cauchy momentum equation 
whose general co- convective form is u on dt is equal to 1 on rho del and sigma plus g by the thing the kauji stress tensor sigma to be the sum of a viscosity term tau the deviatoric stress and pressure term pi volumetric stress we arrive at the kauji momentum equation at least convective form rho du on dt is equivalent to negative del p plus del dot tau plus rho g where d on dt is the material derivative defined as partial on partial t plus u dot u dot del rho is the density u is the flow velocity del dot is the divergence p is the pressure t is term tau is the deviatoric stress tensor which has a 2 g represents body accelerations acting on the continuum for example gravity natural accelerations electrostatic accelerations and so on in this form it is apparent that in the assumption of an in viscid fluid no deviatoric stress goji equations reduce to oil equations Assuming conservation of mass we can use the mass continuity equation or simply continuity equation partial rho on partial t plus del dot rho u is equal to zero to arrive at the conservation form of the equations of motion this is shown kauchi momentum equation conservation form partial on partial t rho u plus del dot rho u cross u is equivalent to negative del p plus del dot tau plus rho g as shown where that o term the cross is the outer product the left side of the equation becomes acceleration and may be composed of time dependent and convective components also the effects of non inertial coordinates if present The right side of the equation is in effect a summation of hydrostatic effects the divergence of deviatoric stress and body forces such as gravity all non-relativistic balance equations such as the Navier-Stokes equation can be derived by beginning with the Koch equations and specifying the stress the stress tends to through a constitutive relation by expressing the deviatoric shear stress tends in terms of viscosity and fluid velocity gradient and assuming constant viscosity the coj equations we have seen will lead to navier stokes equations significant feature of the coj equation and consequently all other continuum equations including euler and navier stokes is the presence of convective acceleration the effect of acceleration of a flow with respect to space While individual fluid particles indeed experience time dependent acceleration the convective acceleration of the flow field is a special effect one example being fluid speeding up in a nozzle it is worth pointing here that the coach stress tensor is denoted sigma instead of tau as it was in general all continuum equation and in incompressible flow as we have seen the compressible momentum just remember that keep in mind the compressible momentum in the stokes equation resulted from the assumptions on the kauji stress tensor one the stress is a galilean invariant it does not depend directly on the flow velocity but only on special derivatives of the flow velocity so the stress variable is the tensor gradient del u Two, the stress tensor is linear in this variable sigma del u is equal to c del u c is the fourth order tensor representing the constant of proportionality called the viscosity or elasticity tensor and those full colon is the double dot product three the fluid is assumed to be isotropic as with gases and simple liquids and consequently v is an isotropic tensor furthermore since the stress tensor is symmetric 
by Helmholtz decomposition, it can be expressed in terms of two scalar lamb parameters. The second viscosity, lambda, and the dynamic viscosity, mu, as it is usual in linear elasticity. This episode is brought to you by Cisco Educational Premium. The incompressible momentum never stocks equation to solve from the following assumption on the Kochi stress tensor. 1. The stress is Galilean invariant. It does not depend directly on the flow velocity but only on spatial derivatives of the flow velocity. So the stress variable is the tensor gradient del u. 2. The fluid is assumed to be isotropic as with gas and simple liquids. And consequently, tau is an isotropic tensor. Furthermore, since the devatoric stress tensor can be expressed in terms of dynamic viscosity mu, Stokes stress constitutive equation, expression used for incompressible elastic solids, tau is equivalent to 2 mu epsilon, where epsilon is equivalent to half del u plus del u raised to t is the rate of strain tensor. So this decomposition can be made explicit as stock stress consecutive equation expression used for incompressible viscous fluids tau is equivalent to mu del u plus del u raised to t. Dynamic viscosity mu need not to be constant in incompressible flows. It can depend on density and on pressure. Any equation that makes explicit one of these transport coefficients coefficient in the conservative variable is called an equation of state. The diversion of the vectoric stress is given by del dot tau is equivalent to 2 mu del dot epsilon is equivalent to mu del dot del u plus del u rest of t is equivalent to mu del square u because del dot u is equivalent to 0 for incompressible fluid. Incomprehensibility rules out density and pressure waves like sound or shock waves. So this simplification is not useful if these phenomena are of interest. The incompressible flow assumption typically holds well with all fluids at low Mach numbers, say up to Mach 0.3, such as for modeling air wounds at normal temperatures. The incompressible nervous stokes equation are best visualized by dividing for the density as shown. If the density is constant throughout the fluid domain, or in other words, if all fluid elements have the same density, rho is equivalent to rho 0, we have a shown where mu is equivalent to mu on rho naught is called kinematic viscosity. For example, let us look at the velocity profile. Lamina flow ux is equivalent to uy, uy is equivalent to 0, uz is equivalent to 0 for the x direction. Simplify the Nevers Stokes equation 0 is equivalent to negative dp on dx plus mu t square u on dy square. The great thing twice to find the velocity profile with boundary condition y is equivalent to h, u is equivalent to 0, y is equivalent to negative h, u is equivalent to 0 is equivalent to 1 on 2 mu dp on dx y square plus ay plus b. From this equa equation, we substitute in two boundary conditions to get two equations. 0 is equivalent to 1 on 2 mu dp on dx h square plus h plus b. 0 is equivalent to 1 on 2 mu dp on dx h square minus h plus b. Add and solve for b. b is equivalent to negative 1 on 2 mu dp on dx h square. Substitute and solve for a, a is equivalent to 0. Finally, it gives the velocity profile u is equivalent to 1 on 2 mu dp on dx y square minus h square. It is well worth observing the meaning of each term comparing to the quantum momentum equation. So we have partial u on partial t plus u dot del u all that being inertia by volume and that part partial u on partial t being only variation we have u dot del u being convection and new 
del square u is equivalent to negative del omega all of that being divergence of stress with negative with new del square u being all division and negative del omega being only internal source g is the external source the higher order term namely the shear stress divergence del dot tau are simply reduced to factor Laplacian term mu del square u this Laplacian term can be interpreted as the difference between velocity at a point and the mean velocity in a small surrounding volume this implies that for a Newtonian fluid, viscosity operates as a division of momentum in much the same way as the heat conduction. In fact, neglecting the conversion term, incompressible navier Stokes equation leads to a factor division equation, namely Stokes equation. But in general, the convection term is present. So, incompressible navier Stokes equation belongs to class of convection division equations. In the usual case of an external field being a conservative field, G is equivalent to negative del phi. By defining the hydraulic head, H is equivalent to the equation as shown. H is equivalent to omega plus phi, that W thing. One can finally contain the whole source in one term, arriving to the incompressible never stocks equation with conservative external field partial u on partial t plus u dot del u minus mu del square u is equivalent to negative del h the incompressible never stocks equations with conservative external field is the fundamental equation of hydraulics the domain for these equations is commonly a three or less dimensional Euclidean space for which an orthogonal coordinate reference frame is usually set to explicit the system of scalar partial differential equations to be solved. In three dimensional orthogonal coordinate systems are three Cartesian, cylindrical, and spherical. Expressing the Never Stokes factor equation in Cartesian coordinates is quite straightforward and not much influenced by the number of dimensions of the Euclidean space employed. and this is the case also for the first order terms like the variation and convection ones. Also, in non cartesian orthogonal coordinate systems, but for the high order terms, the two coming from the divergence of the deviatoric stress that distinguish the Stokes equation from Euler equations. Some tensor calculus is required for using an expression in non cartesian orthogonal coordinate systems. The incompressible Never Stokes equation is composite sum of two orthogonal equations as shown this result follows from Helmholtz theorem aka fundamental theorem of factor calculus the first equation is pressureless governing equation equation for the velocity while the second equation for the pressure is a function of the velocity and is related to the pressure Poisson equation the explicit functional form of the projection operator in 3D is formed from the Helmholtz theorem shown with a similar structure in 2D. Thus, the governance equation is an integral differential equation similar to the Coulomb and Biot Savat law, not convenient for numerical computation. An equivalent weak or variational form of the equation proved to produce the same velocity solution as navier stokes equation is given by w partial u on partial t is equivalent to negative w u dot del u minus nu del w those full columns del u plus w f raised to s for diversion free test function w satisfying appropriate control conditions here the projections are accomplished by the orthogonality of the solenoidal and irrotational function spaces the discrete form of this is eminently suited to finite element computation of divergence free flow 
as we shall see in the next section there one will be able to address the question how does one specify pressure driven poisil properly and with a pressureless governing the absence of pressure forces from uh, the governing velocity equation demonstrate that the equation is not a dynamic one but rather a kinematic equation where the divergence free condition serve the role of a conservation equation this all will seem to refute the frequent statements that the incompressible pressure enforces the divergence free condition this episode is brought to you by Cisco Educational Premium one property of navier stokes equation is nonlinearity the navier stokes equation are nonlinear partial differential equation in the general case and so remain in almost every real situation in some cases such one dynamical flow and stokes flow or creeping flow the equation can be simplified to linear equations the nonlinearity makes most problems difficult or impossible to solve and is the main contributor to the turbulence that the equations model the nonlinearity is due to convective acceleration which is an acceleration associated with the change in the velocity or position hence any convective flow whether turbulent or not will involve nonlinearity an example of convective but laminar nonturbulent flow will be the passage of viscous fluid for example oil through a small converging nozzle such flows whether exactly soluble or not can often be thoroughly studied and understood turbulence is the term dependent chaotic behavior seen in many fluid flows it is generally believed that is due to the inertia of the fluid as a whole the culmination of term dependent and convective acceleration hence flows where Natural effects are small, tend to be laminar. The Reynolds number quantifies how much the flow is affected by inertia. This belief, though not known, is attained that if a Stokes equation describes turbulence properly. The numerical solution of the Nevers Stokes equations for turbulent flow is extremely difficult, and due to the significantly different mixing length scales that are involved in turbulent flow, the stable solution of this requires such a fine mesh resolution that the computational term becomes significantly infeasible for calculation or direct numerical simulation attempts to solve a turbulent flow using a laminar solver typically results in term and state solution which fails to converge appropriately to counter this time average equation such as the reynolds average navier stokes equation runs supplemented with turbulence models are used in practical computational fluid dynamics cfd applications when modeling turbulent flows such models include the spalat almaraz k omega k epsilon and sst models which add a variety of additional equation to bring closure to the runs equations Large eddy simulation less can also be used to solve this equation numerically. This approach is computationally more expensive in terms and in computer memory than RAMS, but produces better results because it explicitly solves the larger co- the larger turbulent scales. Together with supplemental equation, for example, conservation of mass. And one formulated bond condition, the Nevers Stokes equation seems to model fluid motion accurately. Even turbulent flows seem, on average, to agree with real world observations. The Nevers Stokes equation assumes that the fluid being studied is continuum, it is infinitely divisible, and not composed of particles such as atoms or molecules, and is not moving at relativistic velocities. At very small scales or under extreme conditions, real fluids made out of discrete molecules will produce results different from the continuous fluids modeled by any of Stokes equations. For instance, capillarity of internal layers in fluids 
appears for flour with high gradients. For large nuts and number of problem, the Boltzmann equation may be a suitable replacement. Failing that the one may have to resort to molecular dynamics or various hybrid methods. Another limitation is simply the complicated nature of the equations. The time test formulations exist for common fluid families, but the application of the Navier Stokes equation to less common families tend to result in a very complicated formulations and often to open research problems. For this reason, these equations are usually written for Newtonian fluids, where the viscosity model is linear. Truly, general models for the flow of other kinds of fluids, such as blood, do not exist. The Never Stokes equations, even when written explicitly for specific fluids, are rather generic in nature, and their proper application to specific problems can be very diverse. This is partly because there is an enormous variety of problems that may be modeled ranging from as simple as the distribution of static pressure to as complicated as the multi phase flow driven by surface tension. Generally, the application of the specific problems begin with some flow assumptions and initial stroke boundary condition formulation. This may be followed by scale analysis to further simplify the problem. Assume steady parallel one-dimensional non-convective pressure-driven flow between parallel plates. The resulting scaled dimensionless boundary problem is d square u or dy square is equal to negative 1 u0 is equivalent to u1 is equivalent to 0. The boundary condition is the no-slip condition. This problem is easily solved for the flow field u y is equivalent to y minus y square on 2. From this point onward, more quantities of interest can be easily obtained such as the fiscal drag force or net flow rate. Difficulties may arise when the problem becomes slightly more complicated. A seemingly modest twist on the parallel flow above will be the radial flow between parallel plates. This involves convection and thus nonlinearity. The velocity field may be represented by the function fz and must satisfy the equation as shown. The ordinary differential equation is what is obtained when the never Stokes equation are written and the flow assumption applied. Additionally, the pressure gradient is solved for. The nonlinear term makes this a very difficult problem to solve analytically. A lengthy implicit solution may be found, which involves elliptic integrals and rules of cubic polynomials. Issues with the actual existence of solution arise for r greater than 1.41. Approximately, this is not rule 2. The parameter r being the Reynolds number with appropriate chosen scales. This is an example of flow assumptions losing their applicability and an example of the difficulty in high Reynolds number flows. A type of natural convection can be described by Never Stokes equation it is the Rayleigh Bernard convection. It is one of the most commonly studied convection phenomena because of its analytical and experimental accessibility. This episode is brought to you by Cisco Educational Premium. So an exact solution to the never Stokes equation exist. Example of degenerate cases with the nonlinear terms in the never Stokes equation equal to zero R for cell flow, quiet flow and the oscillatory Stokes bond layer. But also more interesting example solution to the full nonlinear equation exists such as Jeffrey Hamel flow, von Kaman swelling flow, stagnation point flow, Landau squid jet, Taylor Green vortex. Note that the existence of this exact solution does not imply that they are stable. Turbulence may develop at higher Reynolds numbers. Under additional assumptions, the component paths can be separated. For example, in the case of an unbounded plan and domain with two dimensional incompressible and stationary flow in polar coordinates R phi, the velocity components U R and U phi and pressure P are shown, where N and B are arbitrary constants. The solution is valid in the domain R greater than or equal to 1, and for A less than negative 2 nu. The Cartesian coordinates when the viscosity is 0, nu is equivalent to 0, that is 
the v x y and p x y is shown let us look at a three dimensional example in the case of an unbound Euclidean domain with three dimensional compressible stationary and with zero viscosity nu is equivalent to zero radial flow in cartesian coordinates x y and z the velocity vector v and pressure p are v x y z and p x y z as shown the, there is a singularity at x is equivalent to y is equivalent to z is equivalent to zero the steady state example with no singularities comes from considering the flow along the lines of vibration vibration let r be a constant radius of the inner coil one set of solution is given by p x y z rho x y z u x y z as shown where g is equivalent to zero and mu is equivalent to zero for a Peter constant n b this is a solution in a non viscous gas in compressible fluid whose density velocities and pressure goes to zero far from the origin now this is not a solution to the clay millennium problem because that refers to the incompressible fluids where a row is a constant and neither does it deal with uniqueness of never stocks question with respect to any tapillance properties